Welcome everyone to Beyond the Steps. It is Friday and we are so happy that you have joined us for this very important show today. We are talking to Leslie Scott Zanovich and Dr. Stephen Karaginas about what are the dangers of not taking an artist-centered approach in working in the performing arts industry. Um, this is a very important and timely topic right now. It is so very important that we in the dance industry say industry, excuse me, take care of ourselves and each other. And we also hold our organizations accountable for taking an artist centered approach to make sure that we are dancing and performing and teaching in a healthy and happy space. Um, so I want to introduce our two guests today. Leslie Scott Zanovich is a choreographer, educator, and passionate movement arts advocate with a career spanning 32 years. She doesn't look at, at all that she's had a 32-year career. Uh, Leslie taught for over a decade as faculty at the Edge Performing Arts Center and Millennium Dance Complex in Hollywood, California. As adjunct faculty in the dance departments of Loyola, Loyola Marymount, I can't speak today, University and Phoenix College. Founder of the Arizona State University's Hip Hop Coalition Dance Company and acted as Creating Opportunities Dance Industry Coach in Hollywood for five years. Leslie is an authorized Darkness to Light facilitator on sexual abuse awareness and prevention. Leslie is considered a specialist on the complexities of sexualization and, and objectification and how it intersects with sexual abuse in movement arts. She founded the nonprofit Edify Movement and Youth Protection Advocates in Dance, also known as YPAD, in 2012 and dedicated her life to YPAD for a decade. Although Leslie is no longer associated with YPAD, she continues her work as the president of the board of NEMA, Nonprofit Education, Advocacy, and Movement Arts. Thank you for joining us, Leslie. Thank you, Melissa. Dr. Karaginas is Stephen Karaginas is a primary care sports medicine physician at Restorative Physical Medicine in Novi, Michigan. He serves as the co-vice president of NEMA's board of directors. Stephen is also the editorial on the editorial board of the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, the credentialing committee of the International Association of Dance Medicine and Science, the executive board of the Bridge Dance Project, and Personal Safety and Dance International Work Group. He's a former advisory panel member for Youth Protection Advocates in Dance. He's also the past president of the American Osteopathic Academy of Sports Medicine and a clinical assistant professor professor at Michigan State University College of Osteopathic Medicine and Wayne State University School of Medicine. He works with Wayne State University Department of Theater and Dance, University of Michigan Dance Department, Madonna University, and Contexture Dance Company, as well as numerous dance studios across Michigan. Thank you for being with us, Dr. Karaginas. Thanks for having me. And I call Dr. Karaginas Dr. K. I think Leslie's probably going to call Dr. Steven. Steven. <laughs> There's one little piece of his bio that we have to make sure gets in. He he also has served in the role of dance dad. Oh, yes. That is Which I feel in working with Dr. Steven, like expands his ability to contribute on like a whole new level. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah. Dance dad is very important and probably very hard. You probably put it like right up there. At the oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's the next check go out to? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's the most the most taxing work you do is writing checks, right? Uh, I think a lot of people can relate to that. So mm -hmm. thank you both for being here and for all of the work that you continue to do to create a safer, healthier dance space for performing artists. Um, and, you know, the emotional and mental toll that working in this industry takes on uh, or, or requires is just sometimes it can be very exhausting. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, uh, direct this to Leslie first. What is your inspiration and motivation for committing to this work? And how do you stay committed through the most challenging times? Thanks for, that's a great question. Um, I think for many of us that become advocates and educators beyond the moves, mm -hmm. it is really rooted in our own personal frontline experience and feeling like we didn't have advocates, feeling like we didn't have a support system, feeling mm -hmm. that we, we, maybe even we were brave and courageous and we tried to speak up about things that felt out of alignment to us or felt scary or unsafe and we were not met um, mm -hmm. with an open ear or an open heart. And in many cases, we were actually met with the opposite, with mm -hmm. people telling us, that we needed to be silenced, that the show must go on. Um, you know, so for me, 
I know I'm, uh, and I think that it's just important at the front of this, just because our work does go on the continuum of abuses, mm -hmm. um, all the way to the more extreme forms of sexual abuse and sex trafficking and objectification. I just want to give your audience that activation warning that we may dip into those topics today. So the great thing about this is this is, uh, you know, something that you can revisit if you mm -hmm. need to step away for a moment. But I, I wanted to preface that because for me, I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse. I'm a survivor of adult sexual assault, and I endured a lot of abuses while I was a professional dancer in Hollywood for almost 20 years. Mm. And so I, I really look at the times where I tried to speak up, I tried to advocate, and I was just met with actually um, more reinforcement and praise for compliance, oh, wow. for, for silencing that part of me that was either feeling harmed emotionally, physically, or spiritually. So for me, um, doing work with the colleagues on NEMA, like Dr. Tomian Roberts, who's a specialist in a co-VP yes. on objectification and sexualization, Dr. Christina Donaldson, who's a clinical psychologist, who is our education director, who also grew up dancing since three and endured a lot of these continuums of abuse herself, to working with Dr. Steven, to Keanu Uchida, who is a co-founder and sits on the board and these, this, you know, Suave and Stevie and uh, this amazing board. There's also Crystal, Andre and Alexia. Mm -hmm. we, um, we all share a thread of, of commitment to how incredible the movement arts is. So I think that that's very important. We, we're not just here because of our witnessing or experiencing the harms, because if we were, we would just be like deuces, we're out. We're right. here because we also have witnessed the way that it can edify and create community and help people find themselves. And it is joy and it is celebration and it is therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us to do this work is safeguarding that. Right. Is safeguarding that. Right. And it's so very important to, to protect it because it's such an amazing outlet for so many people, so many young people who are coming up, so many people who have been in it for their entire life. So we have to protect it at all costs. And thank you so much for the work in your whole team and, and, and what they're doing. Um, I want to talk about the artist centered approach that we want to talk about today. I'm going to uh, direct this direct this to Dr. K because I know we hear in medicine about the patient centered approach a lot. Um, and so taking an artist centered approach in this work, what does that actually mean? Well, so the idea about a artist centered approach, like in sports medicine, athlete centered approach in medicine, a patient centered approach um, it's, you know, what, one of the things that's not me is it's not like letting a dancer do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. like, right. Choreograph your own piece and do it, you know, because when I know when I see other choreographers and, and company managers uh, hear that phrase, they're like, you know, right. I'm an expert. I know what's going on here. They're just like working for me. Mm -hmm. So so what it means truly, though, is that you have the interest and the concerns and the welfare of the dance of the dancer, the artist at the focal point of everything you do. So mm -hmm. even when you're choreographing, you obviously have a vision you want to choreograph, but but too many times you see yourself as the center of everything. And then, okay, these are the pieces I need to create this piece. Right, right, and right. I need this done now. And like the, the best example I can use on this, and I'm dealing with this right now with one of the colleges here in the area. Um, they started their big show for the, um, for the year this week, and they have four full uh, dress rehearsals before their shows, and then they have tech before that even, and that's also ramping up to uh, the all the cleaning they do before that point. So they're exhausted in many cases before they actually perform the actual show. Right. With every other activity, like like in marathon training, two weeks before your run, you're tapering down. You're doing a like a third to a you know two fifth two fifths of what you would do normally for running. Mm -hmm. In basketball, you have a shoot around before the game. Mm -hmm. Football. Day before a game, you have a you know walkthrough. We call it. Mm -hmm. um, you don't hit the day before a game. You're right. not exerting yourself like that. So because we learned that in the athletics, uh, he, keeping the the focus on the athletes' needs to perform better then helps achieve the overall goal of the team. Mm -hmm. so an artist-centered approach. Um, you need it's basically taking all those elements of what a, a performer needs to maximize your ability mm -hmm. to able to thrive in that environment, which it, which has seen, we've seen time and time again, improves the overall performance of the company, of 
of the product of the artistic expression mm -hmm. of that performer. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes that that can be it. It can seem like the total opposite of what you want to do. Like you want us to pull back. Oh my gosh, before a performance, but it makes so much sense. And like you said, it is right. it's something that is done so widely in every other sport. It just, you know. Or think about the choreographer who like the day before the show says, you know what, Melissa, why don't you go over here and do her part? And then you go over here. Let's try that. It's like, right. we're on stage tomorrow. What are you talking about? It's like a totally right. different role. And they do that. And then they, oh, you know, and then we're back. Well, I mean, if you had that prep before, farther enough out, then they can prep for it. But the anxiety that would be caused by that, the mm -hmm. stress by that, it's mm -hmm. not very artistic center, it's more choreographer center right. for exactly. you know, different kind of things. So that's a great example. And another example of yeah. what I'm talking about. This is what I want. And there's also an element of, okay, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Yeah, you can move that person to that part. But what type of mental and physical stress does that put on that, on that artist? Yeah. And you, you have to consider that. And you're also thinking about, you know, the fact that, okay, if I, you know, the issue of touch, right. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I have to be able to touch the dancer and well, sometimes uh -huh. it is okay to say, you know, I kind of, you know, in the beginning, get permission because sometimes we take it, we take it again. It's not thinking about the person's concerns uh -huh. when you're talking about touch and uh, how you manipulate them and how you interact with them. Uh -huh. Sometimes it has to be talked about before in advance to make sure everybody's comfortable with that. And then you can progress forward. But by even acknowledging that the person has a thought process absorbing the uh, the teaching absorbing the contact that's already showing more signs of putting the artist at the center of everything versus they're the object that i can put my hands on and move around, around and do what i want to do and you know you signed up for this you know so you signed up for this therefore i can do what i want to do right that's kind of the that's, that's the antithesis of that so right right well, leslie um what are some of the dangers for performing artists when they work in a space that's not artist centered trauma mm. in the short and long term mm. um uh complex ptsd even wow um and uh, a dehumanization the in dr tomian's work on objectification we have research that shows us that when we are in an environment that treats us as an object, when we turn a person into a product, when we develop a praise reward system, and we also de develop a punishment system, mm. said or unsaid, whether that is said covertly, overtly, or both, within not just individual environments, whether we're talking about um, at home with our caretakers, because that's crucial, um, and the adults in our life at our, in our home environment to the environment, the culture at our studio, mm -hmm. to the culture in with our agents, for those of us that have relationships to agents, what happens when we don't want to do a job our agent wants to send us out on? What mm -hmm. happens when we say no? Are we punished? Mm -hmm. What, what happens when we speak up? Are we humiliated? Are we degraded? I've experienced mm -hmm. all of that. And what happens to the human spirit over a period of time when you were in this system is, is dehumanization. And right. what Tommy Ann's research and a lot of what Stephen is doing with the physical, um, you know, and merging the psychology of injury is really recognizing that the biggest consequence to the system is we start to participate in our own self objectification. We start to lose self-regard. We start to be quiet. We start to ignore our pain. We, our spirit starts to get dim and we lose sovereignty. Mm -hmm. and, and that takes a significant toll on mental wellness, mm -hmm. um, a significant toll on mental wellness. When you feel that not only are the people around you that are supposed to be advocating for you, are turning you are treating you like an object, but that you start to believe that that must be the best way to be in this moment. And you start to, I believe, unconsciously participate in, in harming yourself, you right. know, like dancing injured, getting multiple cortisone shots, um, mm -hmm. going along with coercion, being quiet when there's sexual harassment, just mm -hmm. going along to get along. Um, it's very confusing. Because a lot of times someone who started out 
as our primary mentor, as our icon, as our, our hero, could even be the person that ends up losing regard for our safety. So right. it's very confusing to understand the ecosystem here and the hierarchy and the di and the power differentials and the abuses of power because even that person in that power position has another person and so yeah. it's very easy to lose regard for someone who maybe at one point you truly did love and mentor and that is that is there is a lot of psychological abuse grooming priming that comes in this industry and yeah. everyone has a role from the caretakers to the studio to the convention owners to the competition owners to the adjudicators to the um to the agencies to the productionists, to the directors to the choreographers um everyone has a role mm -hmm. there, there's no such thing as neutral energy everyone has an opportunity to step into a power position to eradicate the continuum of abuse in our industry. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is a lot of time trauma is the obstacle to getting there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and even for advocates, there is, you know, vicarious trauma, compassion fatigue. Yeah. Uh, I'm on a sabbatical right now is the results of that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm grateful. I have a board that is supportive of me taking the sabbatical but I look at this, if I was to have brought this to, let's say, a dance job I'm on. Let's say I was on a big, huge job directing a big show that had a deadline and had a budget and a lot riding on it. Would I have been met with compassion? Mm. Probably not. I would have probably had to, like, be in a car accident and be hospitalized or, right. like, literally, like, legit have some type of a physical illness. In order um, to be Wow. to to have to to receive that mental wellness the stigma around that is still unfortunately alive and well right absolutely and that's so that's so sad and something we definitely need to take some steps some steps forward in if you are just now joining us this is beyond the steps and we are here uh with dr stephen karaginas and leslie scott zanovich to talk about what are the dangers of not taking an artist centered approach uh, in the dance industry? And I want to get into the, I guess, the the meat of, of the topic and really talk about what are some things that we should be doing at every level um, to to make change here. I'm going to start with Dr. Karajinas to talk about, can you give us maybe one or two things that we should be doing in the uh, commercial competitive space, um, in the education space, the higher education, even at the studio level with students um, in order to move toward this artist-centered approach? Well, I think the first thing is having uh, a conversation with the parents uh, openly discussing expectations and uh, getting and opening, opening lines of communication. To make studios, I find that, uh, and, by, and by the way, referring to what Leslie has talked about, not every person who is causing abuse is necessarily evil or bad or even aware. Right. So that's another thing that people don't understand sometimes is that they, even when they, when it's pointed out to them, a lot of times they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was doing that. I'm so sorry. That's mm -hmm. how I was trained. So mm -hmm. a lot of this is like talking about, you mentioned the culture that, that it builds, it envelopes everybody. So, so that's an important point of when we discuss these issues is not blaming anybody and try mm -hmm. to play the no blame, don't play the blame game when people, but try to, open up the lines of communication so that everybody is understanding of what's expected, mm -hmm. uh, what the dancer expects, what they want when they come there. It just takes a little bit extra time. Some studios are, they, they claim that they're so busy that they can't mm -hmm. possibly do it with everybody. Well, then maybe that you're, you should be doing what you're doing. Right. If, if, you, if you run a dance school, for instance, <clears throat> I had one studio once to say before, like she got so flustered when we brought these issues up to her. You know, this isn't a school, like a, co like a college or school or anything like that. And right above them was like, the school of dance, right? You are a school and it takes a little bit of time to get feedback on, on things. So making it feel like they can voice their concerns and, and understand that's the first step is educating the people who are running the school. Mm. And then when the parents and the kids feel like they can say their, what they want to say and express themselves um, and be able to open that communication up first off for you know, firsthand, mm -hmm. that helps them. Um, not build stress internally and be able to voice concerns when things, before things go bad for them, 
before they even reach a, a critical point, they can ask questions and they can, uh, and they may not even want to go to that studio. They may not want to even do uh, some of the choreography that they're comfortable with. I mean, sometimes right. like in baseball, for instance, there are some kids now we're doing more of these mental health screenings on younger baseball players because some kids don't want, they may have a strong arm, but can't be a pitcher. Mm -hmm. You think about it, a pitcher is a player in the middle of the field where everything in the game revolves around. Everything mm -hmm. waits, to, everybody waits for the pitcher to throw the ball. So all that attention is on a kid. And it's 10 years old. Some of these kids can't handle that. Right. So think about a dancer, barely any clothes on, staying mm -hmm. on stage, doing her solo from a huge auditorium. Some of these kids shouldn't be forced to do a solo. Maybe they, they some of these kids aren't right. maybe ready for that kind of pressure yet. So right. but you won't know that unless you talk to the family, talk to the pop. And some right. studios I work with, they're incredibly, they're on the pulse of everything. Every single kid, the, the, the teacher will tell me, give me a whole list of report about the kind of kid they are and all the things, you know, everything. Other places, like, I need her back for this production number. I need her back now. What's right. her name? Uh, the girl, right. Oh, my gosh. Or whatever. What's her name again? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So that's, to me, that's, 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 I mean, there's lots of things we can get into here, but that's the first big step is just in the beginning, opening up things. Again, it doesn't mean that the kid can't work hard. The kid can't follow choreography. Uh, the kid should be telling the teacher, here's what I want to do. I mean, I'm not saying that it has to be like that, but you have to be able to let the, the, the dancer feel as though they're a part of their own dance, mm -hmm. part of their own story, part of their own, you know, the, their, part of their own performance. Right. Leslie, to connect off of what Dr. Um, K just talked about, making that space for the concerns to be expressed and, you know, making it a safe space to be able to express yourself before things become a concern. How important is it as an educator with your education experience that you have in the classroom? How important is it to understand how you should respond to those concerns? Because unfortunately, as dance educators, you know, in the past, people have become defensive. What? Wait. I, that's not what we're supposed that's not what I do. Are you saying I don't know how to do my job or, you know, it, it becomes a defensive stance. How important is it and how do you suggest you respond in a way that creates that 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 relationship? I mean, what Dr. Stephen, it's so funny you and I call him different things, but to the <laughs> viewer, we're all talking about Dr. Stephen Karagenis. I'm sure you right. picked up on that. Um, you know, I had a lot of years when you asked me earlier, my why, mm -hmm. another reason I think is important to bring here is my why is I was a part of the system of harm for mm -hmm. many years after I arrived in Hollywood, I quickly got swept up into being told, well, this is how we do it. This is right. the best way to be. When we talk in psychology about generational trauma, we need to look at the, in the ecosystem of performing arts, movement arts, there is Generation. this generational um, uh, standard of treating the the artist as an object. And that's the best way to actually be. And if we give them a say, we're going soft on them. Stephen talks about this so well. We're not going to build resilient dancers. We're, we're not going to get out of them. You know, in or we need to break them down to build them up. You know, that kind of mentality yeah. that we now know through research comes at a cost, comes at a consequence. Um, not just short term, but long term to bodies, to our physical wellness, to our emotional wellness. Right. And so I think that we uh, that when the education um, of centering um, the idea, first of all, diversity under because a lot of times people are coming to you with something that maybe it's hey, I don't like some of the things I see at this convention. I've, I've seen some things that seem very highly sexualized. I don't feel comfortable with my child participating at this convention. Instead of getting defensive, like, oh my gosh, I picked, you know, or defending your choice, take a breath, count to 10, be willing to be curious. Dr. Tina, um, who's the NEMA education coordinator I mentioned, and also Kimberly Gerstheimer, who's our, who's our CARES coordinator, She's a social worker and a, and a master's in dance. They both talk about when we are, when our nervous system goes up, mm -hmm. one of the best ways to bring it down is to move from ego and defensiveness to being curious, mm -hmm. to being curious. What I feel threatened by is going to be different than Steven is going to be different than you. When we are running a studio 
or a dance related organization, you are going to have hundreds of different value systems, different religions, different cultures, different beliefs, um, different boundaries. And I, I really do think that, that there is also an importance for training before that, that is like the, one of the biggest reasons that, that we created YPAD was to be preventative. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest reasons why we're moving that work and continue with NEMA is because education is power is not just a cliche. When we are prepared for that moment and we've had training, when we have a code of conduct and our educators have had training on how do we respond responsibly to bullying or to disclosures or even to something simple as saying, hey, can I do a different hairstyle? My hair doesn't go this way being right. culturally sensitive. You know, this, that is the training is not to make people not be, um, not, not be authentic and not be organic. That's not and to be lockstep and to have to take away our own unique, like human humanness, because that's not what training is for. When we mm -hmm. teach on training about grooming and mandated reporting and how to take a disclosure, everyone's going to take that and they're going to apply it through their own unique being. But do we want to wait until someone comes and shares something with you and you're a deer in headlights right. and you're like, I don't know how to respond. I don't know how to regulate myself because my ego has taken over. I right. feel threatened by this question. Um, you're, and so I just want to really encourage educators that this is a journey, this journey to creating um, safe spaces, artist centered spaces. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. are, this is, a, this is, I've been at this for 11 years. Um, this is, this is not a new concept, but we're up against a juggernaut of many decades of history. And right. we are also up against a billion dollar industry. And, mm -hmm. and I would, I would really say the number one thing to create a trauma informed approach is slow down. Wow. Slow down. I just got back from a job in Los Angeles that truly required a trauma informed approach. Mm -hmm. And what I was up against was in so what I had to just fight for in being back in Hollywood, it, it made me first of all, realize why I left, but mm -hmm. it made me realize like I had to even push myself out of my comfort zone to speak up when I knew I was going to get stereotyped, where I knew I was going to get put down. And so having that resilience to stand in your belief, when you see something, say something that is not easy to do that comes at a cost. And so, um, but what I really noticed is some harm was just caused to some very important people in this job that I, I don't really want to call it a job, but a, a heart endeavor I was just on. And, and I can tell you if everyone could have just slowed down for a second right? and just could have just slowed down just for a second mm -hmm. and listened to why my requests were so important, mm -hmm. um, that would have changed a lot for the experience of what my goal was and what our dancers went through. So um, what Steven just said about the production said like how he just acted that out is like exactly how it is go 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 and when we go 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 and our leaders are in that place of like constant manic stress mm -hmm. there's no space to, to say oh you're having an anxiety attack oh that doesn't feel safe for you oh you're injured and mm -hmm. and you're, oh i even notice you're limping do you know does that does that make sense because right. we're not conscious we're not present we're not grounded right right yeah go ahead Stephen or letting the person tell you that they're hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified to say anything. So. Yeah. 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 That, that kind of leads into the professional space. It sounds like we've kind of already stepped into what are the steps that we need to take in the professional space to make it more artist centered. I hear Leslie very clearly saying, slow down, <laughs> slow down. What do you say, Leslie, to people who are in the professional space and they're like, if we slow down, we lose. If we slow down, we lose money. If we slow down, we might not get asked to come back for this job. If we slow down, the show doesn't open on time. If we, what the number, the number, myriad of things that you can insert in, if we slow down, fill in blank. 
Mm-hmm. What do you say to them? It's about- a myth. That's a myth. That's okay. that's a lie. That's a narrative that we have been told because it is scary to mm-hmm. confront uh, mental wellness in our industry and how much our industry treats it treats people as objects. It's very scary to confront this. I, I you will not only this is what I would also say. Not only is that a false narrative that is a regurgitation of an old way of thinking that has caused a lot of harm. Um, it, it not only is that it's actually it needs a reframe because mm-hmm. I'm telling you the studios and the jobs and the agents that I have worked with that are willing to take an artist center approach, mm-hmm. they are happier. They sleep better at night. They feel better. They have less chronic pain, less chronic injuries. There is a payout to the entire industry. There is a payout to the art that is created when we are not creating art and creating productions by harming people in the process. Mm-hmm. And so I would challenge that entire narrative and, and, and ask us to, with a loving heart, I had to do this. I did this. That's the only way I created YPAD is I, I had to say it happened at an orphanage. I left Hollywood. I went on a 30 day mission trip to teach dance at an orphanage. It was the first mm-hmm. time that I got back in touch with these kids don't know my resume. These kids don't care if my stomach is flat. They don't care if my booty is bootylicious. Like they could care less how packed my classes are at Millennium. They don't care how many followers I have. And I saw the medicinal impact of dance on children who had been traumatized in many ways. Mm -hmm. And at that moment in 2011, I had already been marinating on creating a nonprofit that served these issues. And Mm -hmm. it made me really come to my, I had to look in the mirror and say, Leslie, you can either continue to be a part of this system of harm or you can do something to change it. Mm -hmm. And so I had to be loving with myself and had to reckon with the things that I had done, the ways that I had treated my assistants, the way I had treated my dancers, the way I had treated myself. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and so I would, I would invite everyone into that self-reflection, that self-inventory and do it with grace, remove Mm -hmm. shame, and then replace it with a rejuvenated spirit to commit yourself to a different way and find community, Mm -hmm. find community because you don't have to be alone. When I tried to do this in Hollywood, I was alone for quite some time, Mm -hmm. you know, but now I'm not anymore. Because now this is, I mean, just to be quite honest, these topics are trending now. Like, you know, I started, when I started speaking out about this in 2010, 2011, in the center of Hollywood, which eventually led to an organization developed to address this, this was not a cool topic. Um, You know, but I was blessed to meet doctors like Dr. Steven, Dr. Tomia, and Dr. T, who were able to co-sign my visceral frontline experience with research, with data. Mm -hmm. you know, and bring all of this. And I'm grateful now to see Mm -hmm. there's multiple organizations, Mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's multiple organizations now that are trying to center this Mm -hmm. because we should all be trying to center this. Right. Right. That's such great point. And so beautifully put Leslie, thank you so much for that. If you're just now joining us, uh, we are talking to Dr. Stephen Karaginas and Leslie Scott Zanovich about how we need to take an artist-centered approach in the dance industry to prevent trauma and harm to our performance athletes um, and everyone who's a part of this community. Uh, if you did not catch the episode from the beginning, full episodes are available at Apollo Performance and at TP Dance Creations on YouTube and Facebook. I want to go to um, Dr. K about advocacy. How important and how do you advocate for yourself? Because I I think that advocating for yourself as the actual artist is going to be what's going to force change at the higher levels, right? So talk about advocacy. What does that look like? What does advocating for yourself look like? Well, advocating for yourself is basically speaking up. It's basically um, voicing uh, you're, you're being your own best representative, essentially. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we, we, we want to look to someone else to be able to say, you know, can you like, you know, mom, can you talk to this person and do this for me and and uh, and find out if this is okay to do or, and essentially what you're, de- you're encouraging the artists to do is say, you know, speak up for yourself, for your needs, communicate your wants, your needs, what's affecting you, what's not affecting you, mm-hmm. um, and be able to 
um, not have fear of reprisal because of simply expressing what you're, what is going on with you and, and, this, and, and, and view in your own opinions too. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things, one of the reasons why I got involved in all this in the first place is way back in, back in high school and in, in junior high, I is, I was bullied myself for a couple of years, uh, very badly at this one school. And I've always had a terrible, I've always hated bullying mm -hmm. in general. And the, and when I look at like all these forms of abuse and even like racism, sexism, all these kind of things, um, bullying is, 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 is that kind of behavior is at the heart of a lot of the stuff. And what a lot of it is based on is trying to get you to stand down, not speak up for yourself and do what I say and do what I, and do what I want you to do. Um, mm -hmm. I don't care what you want. I'm doing it. I, I can call you names. You're going to like it. Don't speak right. up. And so that's, so advocacy essentially is, and again, it's, some, it's, it's very hard sometimes to do it on your own. That's why we have you want to try to get resources that can help you understand how to advocate for yourself. Different organizations, as I mentioned before, um, you know, with with the issue of suicide, for instance, you know, so many times um, some of these terrible situations can be averted if there was any way to reach out to that person. Mm -hmm. And if a person is struggling, sometimes we don't know until it's too late. And so right. we encourage you know people to you know putting advocacy resources out there for everybody to help them find a way to advocate for themselves is, you know, that is the mission of all these different organizations. So it's not, all you gotta do is reach out. Um, if you ask for help, you shall receive kind of approach really. Right. Um, but it's, but it's, and that may require you to find advocacy help outside of the dance environment you're in right now. Mm -hmm. um, and that, it, it would be a reason why we're trying to work with different studios and conventions and professional companies individually, as well as in, in mass, because, um, again, that's creating that, that safe enough space for someone to be able to say, mm -hmm. I can't handle this. I'm really stressed out. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going crazy here. And, and, and sometimes it can be something like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I have you doing two things at the same time. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. It can be something as simple as that. But right. the advocacy, when we say advocacy, it doesn't mean someone else is doing it for you. Right. Um, they can, the idea is to help you be able to understand what you need, how to articulate what you need. Be able mm -hmm. to express it, mm -hmm. right? Um, a lot of times it's just like I don't know what's. I'm just going crazy. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to handle this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then be able to be able to say something and be able to recognize something yourself internally before it builds up to anything more severe. Right. Right. Absolutely. Melissa, can I tag on that really quick? Yes. Um, I mean everything that Stephen that Dr. Stephen just said is why we have the CARES program because mm -hmm. our CARES program is staffed with people who, if you want to advocate for yourself, but you need some support, you need some love, you need, you need a safe place where you can even figure it out. Sometimes mm -hmm. people see things or they experience things and they don't even know what has happened. They're, right. they, they're, they're, they're like, oh, I witnessed something. It, it made me feel very scared, but it's kind of normal. No one else seemed to react the way that I reacted. Like everyone kind of blew it off. Like it's not a big deal. Like in me working with survivors of abuse in this industry, a lot of that is, is almost like you're gaslighting yourself. Right. You know, you're, you're, you have an internal gaslighter who is trying to say, oh, well, that's not what it was, or that, or there's something wrong with me that I feel so violated right now. Mm -hmm. And so for, there's also Athletes Helpline that was just recently released through Child Help, which is an awesome nonprofit. There are more and more free confidential spaces mm -hmm. where you can, you can get on a phone and you can process. You don't have to worry about if you have the right words, if you have all the facts in place, like our brains, um, I think it's so important that we understand suicidal ideation. By the time someone gets to suicidal ideation, PTSD is a physical injury to the brain. P mm -hmm. Trauma is a physical injury to the brain. Um, this is a lot of people think just because someone has had a traumatic event does not equal they're mentally ill. Right. Just because someone has had a series of traumatic events, what is, what is trauma? trauma is a violation of your boundaries that's what trauma is and there are micro traumas that mm -hmm. happen to us across our lives and there's a continuum from the seemingly benign the traumas mm -hmm. that we all endure every day because we live in a culture that mm -hmm. treats us as objects 
from our media, you know, making this normal all the way through to bigger violations, mm -hmm. um, you know, assault. Uh, you know, I've seen this happen with NDAs, you know, violations of, of, of lack of informed consent. Um, I just had a situation when I was in Hollywood where there was a situation where somebody was asked to sign something pretty high stakes and they were actually injured at the time. Wow. I, I had to intervene. You're asking someone as they are on the ground with an injury, crying, what, why I'm icing and, and you're literally slipping in wow. something for them to sign. And, and thank God for my training that I said, this is inappropriate. This is highly inappropriate because mm. they, because they wanted them to sign a waiver. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like that mm. right there, Dr. Stephen is so right. That person is not evil. That person had, that person was sent by another person. Person, right. You know, no, no like I do believe there is, there is a demographic in our industry that are perpetrators that are, that are here to harm, here to uh, gaslight, manipulate. The vast majority of us are participating in this because we don't know better, because we are stuck in this, in this unconscious space and education and community is the way out. And the other way out is just releasing us from shame and guilt of the time that we functioned in a way that did cause harm to people. Because mm -hmm. we did it because, you know, Maya Angela, when we know better, we, we can do better. So yes, have Dr. Stephen and I and our board come in contact with that darker side, the underbelly of the industry where they are here to exploit, commodify, objectify, coerce. Yes, there mm -hmm. is that. But that is not the vast majority of, of who is in our industry. Um, awesome. I just want to, um, Dr. K is going to need to step away. Um, so I just wanted to alert everybody that he's going to disappear from the frame um, to go help people. And that's why we definitely have to let him go help people because he is much needed. Uh, but thank you so much. Can we much. say something about Dr. K before he goes? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I had the blessing of actually being treated by Dr. K, Dr. Stephen, at one point. Um, one of the things that Doctors for Dancers and Dr. Stephen Karagianis here is doing is to advocate to see uh, physicians that actually understand the movement arts, because there is a thing called treatment induced trauma. When I met Dr. K, I had because I'd gone to all of these physicians that basically blew me off. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I can't um, highlight enough what what Dr. Stephen is doing as a performing arts medicine physician and all the, you know, you his bio, that is like work given in as a volunteer to all mm -hmm. these organizations to recognize that, that you, an artist-centered approach is actually going to doctors like Dr. Stephen, where mm -hmm. you're gonna be treated with regard and you're not going to where they actually understand what we are being asked to do with our bodies. Mm -hmm. And that's also the mission of Doctors for Dancers. So I just just want to say that to Dr. Stephen, because that's yes. imperative. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Thank Doctors you. for Dancers, great organization, too. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. K. We don't want to hold you up. Thank um, you. It's been a pleasure. Bye, Leslie. Bye, Dr. Stephen. So great to see you. You too. Thank you. So Leslie, we like to give homework here on Beyond the Steps. You've been with us before, so you know that we give homework. We give our viewers one small thing that they can do to make progress in this area between now and our show next Friday. So in the next seven days, what is your one step that you would like for all of our viewers to take? Mm. <laughs> tough because there's so much right there is there's so there's so much to be done um honestly none of it can be done if we don't recognize our own resistance to change mm. yes. yes i i mean i could say go get training i could say go you know, go engage in a workshop, go learn this, don't go learn that. But if you're not showing up with a humble willingness to, to listen, mm -hmm. um, and to, like I said, my advocacy, you know, the 11 years I've been in this only came because I had to break down to break through. 
This mm -hmm. wasn't like I was in Hollywood and was just pointing at everyone else and like, mm -hmm. look at them and look at them. Like truly I had those experiences. I had to do this. I had to do this first mm -hmm. because I can't control all these other people. I can't control right. all these other, you know, million dollar dance related organizations that have power. Mm -hmm. All I can do is control my role and my impact and my butterfly effect in mm -hmm. the greater system. And mm -hmm. I would do not underestimate your power in right. this space. Right. Don't underestimate what, you know, that, and don't underestimate that when you are brave, you deserve someone to say that was hard. You did mm -hmm. something brave. You spoke up. That must have, that must have been horrible to, to that. I mean, it's like heart palpitations, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the truth is, there is punishment. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say, but there, there, there is, there is punishment. Mm -hmm. But speaking. there's reward on the other side as well. Like if you can move through, Melissa, I've never been sitting here with people like you, mm -hmm. right? Or, I mean, or, Casey or Stephen or Doctor T. Like all of these incredible people that I now have as my new community, mm -hmm. people that actually care about these topics that only it, what you just said is, is there is suffering in advocacy. I'm sorry, but there is yeah. because no one likes to feel excluded. No right. one likes to feel like they are suddenly like they're the only one that is saying, Hey, is I, I don't want to dance on concrete for five hours in high heels. Right. And actually I should be getting hazard pay for this. Like right. that is so hard because you get stigmatized and labeled as the problematic dancer. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, and, and so that just one thing was homework. Look at your own heart disposition, but I know that your audience is filled with people who are already on deck, mm -hmm. who they already have that heart disposition. They are already like in advocacy. Right. I would say the healer needs healers. The encourager needs an encourager. Be hyper aware of how doing this work around trauma recovery and, mm -hmm. and, un, and trying to advocate and educate on creating safer spaces in dance. Be very, very hyper vigilant of what it does to you mm -hmm. as a human spirit and find people that can lift you up as you were lifting others up. Mm -hmm. um, because it is burnout in any type of advocacy, any nonprofit work. There's a reason why burnout is so um, it's so normalized. You know what right. I'm saying? It doesn't have to be nonprofit work. Any work that does this, you know, this is this is tough when you have that duality of something that you love so much that has helped you and given you so many gifts. Also, at the same time, can cause so much harm. Yeah, that yeah. is psychologically and spiritually and emotionally a very um conflicted and and tender and tricky space to be in right. so i just want to say i see you i hear you find safe people to move through this journey of advocacy with you mm -hmm. and, and finding your own strength to speak up mm -hmm. and know that there will be a time where it may hurt or you may have to actually let go of friends. You may have to let go of agents. You may have to change studios. You, you may, you may have to um, shed, pluck, prune, but mm -hmm. like Melissa just said, new seeds will be planted mm -hmm. and new things will grow and it will smell beautiful and it will feel safe in your artistry. You will find your full potential in that as an artist. Mm -hmm. You will find it and it will feel freeing and good. Yes. So beautiful, Leslie. Oh my gosh. You just, now I'm just ready to go. Like I feel, feel so motivated. Thank you so well, much. I want to give that to you because when I say this, I I'm saying this to you as an advocate who sits here doing these types of podcasts, mm -hmm. who's willing to talk about very activating topics mm -hmm. and Thanks. is, you know, I can imagine I'm speaking this to you, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
Um, you have your homework from Leslie. Um, please make sure that you take those steps. We also have homework uh, that we give you every single week. Take the steps initiative. There are courses in that initiative that are totally free um, that can help you start on your way to helping yourself or helping others. So please make sure you go to the Apollo website um, and do that. Uh, Leslie has given us some amazing resources. Tell us about NEMA and the mission of NEMA and then some of the resources. I have the links here that I'll pop up for people to see as well. The education, the cares, and then yeah. the resources. Yeah. I also just want to thank um, Apollo because I was recently diagnosed with severe plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. um, and my socks are like how I'm getting through. Oh, so yeah. I just... It's amazing because we are taught so much just to push through the pain. And I think that, you know, what it, obviously you all are doing is not just preventative, but if we do have an issue, we don't have there, you know, these socks have changed right. my life, right. you know? And um, so anyone out there that might have plantar fasciitis, I have so much empathy for you. It's like stepping on thumbtacks, but, oh my gosh. but try the Apollo socks. They are awesome. Oh. Um, I just wore them all through this thing that I just did. And um, this very special a thing that I was able to be involved in in Hollywood. So NEMA is stands for a nonprofit education and advocacy um, for the movement arts. We are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Our mission is, um, it's not just dance, it's all movement arts. And it's not just children, it's adults. So we have the continuum of, we really believe healthy adults, healthy adults grow healthy children. Mm -hmm. So as an educator, when I was kind of sharing where I was before my advocacy work, that I had to go through a lot of trauma recovery. So I wasn't teaching through trauma informed choices. Right. Where I was, where when that parent came to me and maybe gave me some feedback, I didn't respond with total right. defense and ego, you know. So, um, so our our mission is to really create emotional, physical, sexual wellness and safety spaces within all movement arts, from gymnastics to twirling to dance to band, um, mm -hmm. circus, uh, right. ice skating, anything. And again, children through adults um, are. Um, the co-founder is Keanu Uchida, um, who many of you I'm sure know. Um, and then we have an incredible board and you just met Dr. Steven. He's the co-VP with Dr. Tony Ann. Our CARES program is literally for what we just talked about here. Mm -hmm. um, it's anything from if you've seen something and you don't know how to say something, maybe you don't know what you've seen. CARES stands for Compassionate Advocates Providing Resources, Education, and Support. And I love how that spells CARES. Right. Our coordinator is Kimberly Gerstheimer. She has a master's in social worker and social work and a master's in dance. And we are it, it's staffed with clinical psychologists, Dr. Stevens, social workers, and we are able to handle the basically the continuum of abuses or fears and yeah. dance eating disorders body image sexual abuse are you in an abuse of power situation have you been is are you in an nda situation where it's been weaponized against you and you are feeling silenced or, or coerced or threatened um you know uh it really anything to do with emotional physical and sexual wellness and safety because mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to navigate this alone Mm -hmm. um, and that's what CARES is for. It's completely free. It's completely confidential. It's not therapy, mm -hmm. but we can help you get to therapy. therapy. Um, you know, something like that Dr. T has helped people with is, where do you live? What's your health insurance? Oh, you don't have health insurance? Let me find you. Let me find you access to health uh, to healthcare in your area, to a therapist in your area. Um, it's really hard to say advocate for yourself when you are in a broken down and scared place. Right. That, that you need other at that point when your resilience is so low, when you maybe are already in suicidal ideation, when mm -hmm. you're dealing with self-harm, maybe you're a teacher and you've noticed that one of your students might be self-harming and you don't know how to bring it to the parent. Call mm -hmm. CARES. Get on a conversation. We can help you figure out some language and how to navigate that journey. Mm -hmm. um, it's very nuanced. I, I, I'm so proud of the CARES program because it is so needed that when a lot of times, Melissa, when people come across moments to advocate, do you know a lot of times they freeze and mm -hmm. they don't do anything? And it's not because they don't care. It's because they are not well-resourced. 
They don't know what to do. They're afraid if what they if they do something, they might cause harm. And so right. a lot of times people just put their head in the sand. Mm -hmm. But it's not because they don't care. Right. So it's cares right. can be there for you so right. that you can get some good, you know, guidance and resources. And then education department is led by Dr. Christina Donaldson. We have our Learn and Grow, which is for adults, all dance related organizations or movement arts related organizations, those can be customized. We can do any type of workshop. Um, if you wanted a workshop just on sexual abuse and prevention and awareness and how to respond responsibly, disclosures, mandated reporter, we can do that. If you want something just on body image, if you want something just on self-esteem and self-compassion, we can, we can customize that. And mm -hmm. then inside moves is the exact same thing, but for ages five to seven to seventeen or eighteen, because we know a lot of studios have seniors who turn right. eighteen. But yeah. inside moves is going inside to that what we you know that spirit swag of that dancer. Um, you know how to help them navigate the impact of social media. We can teach on topics from media literacy to body love. Um, uh, it, it really, really anything, um, that, you know, that has to do again with emotional and physical, um, and even sexual wellness, we can outsource you to organizations like child help who does have curriculum mm -hmm. around consent for minors. Mm -hmm. Um, child help has curriculum for all ages because consent is so important for us to teach our young people, um, early on, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so those that's our education department. And then we have our ally program, which mm -hmm. is anyone that wants to be a part of this change, that mm -hmm. wants to volunteer for our nonprofit, um, join, join NEMA Allies. Um, there is an onboarding process, but I think uh, Keanu Uchida actually developed it. The thing I love about it is, is what are your strengths? What are your interests? Where do you feel called to serve? NEMA is so vast and vibrant in what we do address. You are, you are able to have some self-driven autonomy and say, well, you know what I'm really passionate about? I'm really passionate about physical safety. Great, let's get you with Dr. Steven. Let's do, you know what I'm really passionate about? Language around the body. You know, mm -hmm. eating disorders prevention. Great, let's get you to work with some things with Dr. Christina Donaldson. She's a specialist in that. So mm -hmm. I love that that we can invite volunteers to come and let them put an impact where they already have, you know, like a, uh, you know, where they already have energy for that. You're not coming in and we're saying, go do this, go do that. Does that right. make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. And that, that makes all the difference. So uh, it sounds like you have a wonderful, wonderful complement of resources that you can offer people. Um, please visit nemacares.org um, to find out more about NEMA. Leslie, it has been an absolute pleasure. We cannot wait to have you back and see the wonderful things that NEMA is going to do and all the people that they are going to help. Uh, we are just honored to have you as a, as a partner um, in this. So thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you do, Melissa and Bree and Casey and Apollo and everyone. So be on the steps. Uh, next Friday, we will have Gina McFadden on talking about what are the top five ways to help children build healthy habits. Bree will be back with me. Um, and uh, we are going to uh, have a wonderful conversation with Gina that's so very important um, to making sure our children are growing into happy, healthy adults that have positive and healthy habits um, that they have built. If you did not get to watch this entire episode, please go back and watch. It is so awesome. Uh, go to Facebook or YouTube at Apollo Performance and at TP Dance Creations to find the full episode. Um, but until next time, you have your homework from Leslie and continue your journey beyond the steps. See you later.